I was over at my brother's house and I noticed that some of his IKEA garden lights weren't working too well. In particular this one which I've already fixed which was just completely dead because the lead off the LED had been corroded completely, it's right through, it's just rotted. And uh, I thought well this one's uh, looking a bit uh, shady as well. So aside from the usual gunk and goo, this one's kind of working but it's from the rust stain in here it's very clearly going to die in due course. So let's give this a clean for a start. Let's uh, get this yuck off and then open it up and I'll show you uh, what these look like inside because they're actually quite well designed and the, the good design starts on the top because the uh, the solar array is resined in. Now I have to say I've never been overly keen on the actual um, silicon solar cells being potted into plastic like this. I'm not sure if they've got another substrate supporting them underneath. But uh, in the ones where they're just put onto standard black plastic, uh, the thermal expansion coefficient, the um, COE coefficient of expansion, uh, it causes, uh, there's a difference, and if they're bonded on, it can actually crack the glass. But in these ones, it seems okay, because these have been out in all weathers, and they seem to be fine. This bit I'll get out of the way. I'll give that a wash later. It's horrible. Oh, I shouldn't have sniffed it. That's horrible. Um, so, opening it up, uh, it requires a small screwdriver bit. Let's use that dinky little bit. I'm not sure if that switch is even good. No, the switch is very crunchy. No, it's not very good. So let's open it up by taking the two screws that hold it together out. And this is where it's actually quite a tight fit. And that's good. It's been quite well designed. It's also notable that it's got this little dimple down that the LED's in, but that's not actually a good thing in a way. I suppose it means that there's the minimum of plastic between the emitter and the sort of the outer shroud it's lighting. But in, in this case, it, it filled up with water and other. So this comes off quite tightly, really tight fit. I mean, it really is squeaky sort of like Tupperware type fit. And that reveals inside a foam pad holding a IKEA rechargeable nickel metal hydride cell in. So let's uh, whip that out. In fact, you know what? I'm going to stick that on to charge as well. Give it a boost up. But it is a modest capacity. What is it? It's, um, it's a seems to be, I don't know if it's an IKEA type of cell that they'd sell as standard. IKEA type of yeah, cell that they'd sell. 750 milliamp hour, it says, nickel metal hydride. And that's quite a good capacity. Then there's this pad here. Now I am seeing moisture up the side here, so it's possible that the water has wicked up the side and I'm seeing also uh, residue around here. I don't know if that's some sealant they've used, like a, a grease. That might be worth uh, checking out just in case they have put some sort of, uh, sort of Vaseline type or silicon grease on to try and seal that. I don't know if that's grease or it's just organic goo. But I'm wondering, the fact that the corrosion is so concentrated around the switch here makes me wonder if the switch itself has wicked water up uh, around its little seal. So let's uh, pop the circuit board out. I'm seeing cloudiness in the back of the circuit board here. Uh, I don't know if that's just sort of a soldering flux type residue. Well, that screw is uh, that screw's corroded into the plastic. And out it comes. So it's got this uh, little sort of silicon rubber seal over the switch. The switch is just corroded to bits. Now this is such a common thing in solar lights. It's a real pain in the butt because, um, yeah, that's really wet around there. I wonder if the mo moisture's been over the top or if that's actually been coming in. Where it's come out, look at Let's look at the seal. The seal seems to be making a modest seal, but there is moisture at the top here. I wonder if that has, if it's been wicking under the um, seal there. Now, one of the disadvantages of all solar lights being completely sealed is that uh, this void in here, as the sun hits it, it warms up and the air inside it expands so it'll find its way out any crevice whatsoever and then at the at night time it goes re really cold and then that air contracts again and that pulls in moisture so it's a continuous pumping action uh, on a sort of daily cycle and that can bring water in. I see some corrosion around the top of the LED 
I'm possibly going to do what I did with the other one uh, and just remove the switch, bypass it, and then actually mount a new LED in, uh, but mount it straight onto the circuit board. Because uh, the other one, that's the fact that it, the water had gone down into this recess here and filled up, and it meant that the LED was kind of captive in the water, so I'm also going to give that a good clean. So let's uh, start this. I'm going to grab some solder. some fresh lead-based soda, and I'm going to reflow the soda joints just to uh, wet them, uh, just to make them more receptive to being melted, because they are very crusty looking. In fact, so crusty looking they're not even really wanting to, uh, to take new soda at all. That's not a good start, is it? It is the curse. I mean, I have to say, uh, these IKEA lights seem to be quite well designed in this regard, but it's really hard to make something suitably infallible that, you know, just can't fail. So I'm going to reflow this solder uh, on the LED as well. Yeah, the solder is just not really... it's not happy. Let's see if we can wiggle that LED out. The circuitry is not the normal circuitry in these. Uh, I noticed that with IKEA solar lights, they don't just use the standard little four-pin chip. Yeah, one of those solder connections is not letting go at all. That is so crusty that the oxide on it is acting as a sort of barrier to the solder. It's keeping it sort of thermally insulated. I may have to scrape these and get through to some cleanness. Uh, the uh, solder resist is also flaking off there. It's kind of lifted a bit from the board. That's a shame. Let's try this again. As I say, the IKEA stuff is pretty well designed. Uh, but they're using a, a different chip. The chip they're using in this one is an SWLB it's marked. I'm not sure what that is. I've not actually looked for it yet, but will do. Is this going to come out? Yes, it's come out. Good. And I'll clear that off afterwards. The pad doesn't look shiny where that's come out. That's a bit disappointing. Let's see if we can get the switch off. I would try desoldering some of the pads, but maybe I'll just try that technique where you just move between them quickly. And the solder hopefully stays molten long enough that it... Uh, it's not working either. This is not an easy task. Oop. Quick application of the solder iron to my hand. Oh, I think it's coming, I think it's coming, I think it's coming out. Yeah, these soda joints are not melting. Ow! Because, uh, the... Do you see I've just scorched the finger there? Fortunately, it was very briefly, it's just, uh, on the surface. It's just because it's got that oxide layer on the, on the top of it, and it's just stopping it melting. That is annoying. So, from this experience, I'd say, one of the first things you should do if you're actually uh, desoldering these is take a screwdriver and just scrape through the crud on the outside of these solder joints until you get through to the shininess, because that's going to make it uh, take new solder a lot better. That is annoying. Hold on, does my finger smell of burnt pork? Not really, it's not that bad. Fast reflexes. Oh, let's try this again. This is this is turning into a long task, but that's okay. Uh, sometimes the first one is the hardest, and then if you do any others, it's like you know what to be aware of next time. Let's see if this works better this time. Oh, that is actually feeling a lot better. So, now I've removed that switch, all I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to bridge over the two contacts. Two sides of the switch are common together, and the other one is uh, on its own, so I'm going to just flood tons of solder on both those pads and heat them up simultaneously uh, until I've formed that little bridge there. I should have zoomed in this, but not to worry. I didn't. The LED, right, let's say I get some flux in that. The other circuit board in this, I really had to scrub this circuit board. It was really corroded inside. A lot of water had built up. It's just so hard keeping water out. So that, where's the flux pen? Here's the flux pen. Let's give it a quick flux and get the desoldering braid and also get some flux onto the desoldering braid because it's always so much more effective if it's got a bit of flux in it. 
So that's me given two flux now. And uh, let's just see if I can get the solder off those pads. See if it's going to be receptive to being desoldered. That one's not so receptive to being soldered, but that's all right. That's better. Right. And a new LED. I did note the polarity. Uh, the negative was on the outside. It, the printer circuit board has the flat showing the LED on that side. So let's get that on there. And solder one of those connections while holding the LED in. With my finger around the back, it's right up next to the edge of the circuit board, which makes it just that little bit trickier, but that's okay. I'll just tack it, first of all. Line it up, and just reflow that to let it settle in. Then get some solder on that pad, we a bit congested in that area, that's all right. That looks pretty good. Okay, so theoretically, if that battery's got a charge in it, which I think it has, uh, it snips. Let's just crop these leads. Uh, then, theoretically, this should work, but uh, it's so sensitive to light, maybe that's why they used that chip themselves, that uh, it may take Major League, it might not be possible to black it out to make it light. Hold on, I'm just going to have to take it under here. No, it's it's not lighting, but that's just because uh, uh, it really is so sensitive to light coming in from any side in this that uh, I had to take it in a dark room, the other one, to actually make it light. But uh, everything looks pretty good. The solder blob is in place. That should be it. Uh, I'm just going to validate this. I'm actually going to go and uh, check... Well, I'll tell you what, let's use that other battery that we know has uh, got a charge in it. Oh, that's better. Uh, it's lighting continually now. That's not necessarily a good thing, is it? I wonder if that means the circuitry has suffered damage. That's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Ah. Uh, okay. Right, anything really obvious in the circuit board? Have I bridged something out with solder, or is it just that something... The chip here looks crusty. I'm going to give the circuit board a clean up. I'll be back in a moment. And that's it back in action. It was just needing cleaned. All I did to clean the back was I used methylated spirits. You could use isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. And I used a toothbrush that I keep dedicated to cleaning printed circuit boards. And I just gave it a good scrub in all directions. And it's cleaned it up very nicely. And then just sloshed a bit more over it to wash off the residue. The one bit that didn't really come off easy is the well-entrenched, corroded stain from the rust. So that's it. Uh, that's it. Ready to go back into the light, which I've also cleaned. And also, on the base of the success, I cleaned that up. I gave this a clean anyway. So, um, yeah, that's a good result. I shall put these back together for Ralph and then go and install them in his garden again. One other thing I did was, uh, and you may not see this. Oh, you can see it because you can see the shyness. Because there's now a hole there where the switch was, I've put a bit of clear waterproof tape over it. The sort of, what they call, uh, this is called all-weather clear tape or clear all-weather tape. It, I bought this on eBay, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if there's a specific model number that, that says 3M inside, but whether it's real or not, I don't know. But it's a heavy-duty tape that's used for repairing glazing or joining polytunnel rips and stuff like that. It's, it's very good. It seems very weather resilient. It's the same stuff that I put over the solar cells where they've not sealed as well as this one is. Now, you might be tempted uh, to fill up a hole like this with a uh, silicon uh, glazing sealant, the sort of clear silicon you get. Keep in mind that if the silicon smells of vinegar, then it's liberating acid, and that's not good for the electronics. That can in itself cause corrosion. But you get uh, the uh, non-acid curing stuff if you hear rumbling noise in the background, my neighbour has a little construction project going on in his garden. He's always gardening. Um, but yeah, that, that's it sealed up. I'll also take some tape over and seal the other one up that I've uh, removed the switch from here. And uh, yeah, put them back in Ralph's garden, then check out the others to see if they need the same sort of treatment. So uh, it's a shame that they let watching like this, but it's just what happens. Uh, with solar garden lights. Now the question is, do I put uh, some Vaseline or silicon uh, grease around that? Is that going to make a difference? I might give that a go and see what sort of effect it has. But yeah, uh, good result. It's that's more or less back up in action then.